My name is Nelson Bennett, and I'm a professor here of biology um, at Montgomery College in Tacoma Park. Uh, today we're going to look at a board which summarizes many of the major peripheral nerves of the body. So we're going to get some highlights of the peripheral nerves, their groupings, and what they do. So I guess we could start by talking about uh, a neural plexus. A neural plexus is a network of nerves that emerges from the spinal cord at various locations, and a plexus will have numerous redundant and uh, multiple connections so that if function is lost in one pathway, you don't lose function altogether because you have other redundant pathways. And um, we have four such groupings of nerves. Uh, the first neural plexus I can talk about is up here. This is called the cervical plexus. And one important nerve that emerges from the cervical plexus it's not very visible in the model here, but uh, you can see it on one side of the neck, and that's this nerve here, which kind of ends there. It's been cut off. This nerve, which belongs to the cervical plexus, is called the phrenic nerve, and the phrenic nerve operates a very important muscle like your diaphragm. So without the phrenic nerve, you're not going to breathe. But the phrenic nerve is here, and it's part of the cervical plexus. The next group of nerve, or the next plexus, is going to be the brachial plexus here. And there are four nerves that we can highlight from the brachial plexus. Uh, the first one is the most uh, superior and lateral of these branches, and that's called the musculocutaneous nerve. That nerve basically goes to your biceps group, which would help you to flex your forearm. So the musculocutaneous nerve comes out here and goes to the biceps area. Uh, the other three nerves belonging to the brachial plexus uh, continue down here. You can see them quite nicely, three nerves here. Uh, let's talk about two of the nerves that are responsible for flexing various muscles. On the most medial side, we have the ulnar nerve going down here next to the ulna. And the ulnar nerve goes all the way down to the hand and ends at the little finger and also at the fourth finger. Uh, so when you flex your small finger and your fourth finger, that's essentially going to be the uh, ulnar nerve that's responsible for that action. The next nerve, which is next to the ulnar nerve, is going to be the median nerve. The median nerve goes down the very central aspect of the forearm and then its branches go to all the remaining fingers of the hand. So it goes, branches go to the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and part of the fourth finger. Uh, and when you flex those fingers, that's essentially the action of the median nerve. And then finally, we have the radial nerve. The radial nerve is associated with the posterior aspect of the upper extremity, and is pretty much responsible for most uh, extensions. Most uh, extensions that you would do of any of the muscles would be the responsibility of the radial nerve and its branches. So for example, when you're extending your forearm, that's the action of the, of the, sorry, of the triceps muscle. The triceps muscle is responsible for extending your forearm, and that would be one of the branches of the radial nerve. So to summarize, the four major nerves of the brachial plexus are going to be the musculocutaneous nerve, which goes to the biceps area, we have the ulnar nerve, which goes to the little finger and part of the fourth finger. We have the median nerve, which goes to the remaining fingers. And the radial nerve, which is responsible for most extensions. Moving on from the brachial plexus, you can see we don't have a plexus anywhere down in the rib area. Uh, the nerves are quite simple there, but we do call the nerves that go between the ribs, we call those the intercostal nerves. And finally, the next plexus we're going to come to is going to be down here called the lumbar plexus. <clears throat> A major nerve of the lumbar plexus, you can see here, emerging from the lumbar plexus. This nerve is called the femoral nerve, and it goes to the muscles like the quadriceps muscles. So lumbar plexus nerves are generally associated with the anterior of the body. Moving down from the lumbar plexus, we have the sacral plexus, which contains the largest nerve of the body, known as the sciatic nerve. 
you can see this really large nerve here going down the posterior aspect of the lower extremity. This is the sciatic nerve. And just before you get to the back of the knee, the sciatic nerve is going to split into two branches. The branch that continues down the posterior aspect of the leg is called the tibial nerve. And as you can see, branches of the tibial nerve go to the bottom of the foot and help to operate the muscles of plantar flexion. The other branch of the sciatic nerve that you can see here, it's a little bit concealed on this side of the model, but on this side of the model you can see it wrapping around the head of the fibula, and it proceeds down the anterior part of the leg and goes to the top of the foot, which would operate the muscles of dorsiflexion. So to summarize many important nerves of the sacral plexus, we have the femoral nerve on the front, which goes to the quadriceps muscles. We have the sciatic nerve, which goes way down the back. It's the largest nerve in your body. Branches into two major branches, known as the tibial branch on the posterior, and the fibular branch, which comes around to the anterior of the leg. And that pretty much takes care of the nerves, of the major nerves, peripheral nerves of the body.